Good morning, it's Donald D. E. Taylor, Joshua, coming to you from here in Boston Bar, British Columbia. I've uh, been working to about 4 o'clock this morning to get the Exodus 2 live series <coughs> updated. I've got uh, uh, close to 107 uploaded, and I'm going to be doing three videos today. And uh, I'm going to be doing one on the, on the, on the gas test. And the Lord gave me a, uh, I was sitting down and having coffee this morning and the Lord began to speak to me while I was having my coffee concerning what the image of the beast is. And, and uh, conventional religion, they don't, really don't have the revelation on it. And how did Jesus, how did Yeshua look at the image of the beast, what would his understanding be, right? We know that uh, there is going to be a electronic image, a hologram of, of the beast. We, you know, we know that the uh, Antichrist kingdom is both the, a person and a system, the, the new world order, right? And uh, there will be a time where uh, what uh, Maurice Clar saw, he saw this kiosk set up where an image would come up, like a virtual hol hologram, and, and if you didn't bow down to it, you'd have your head cut off. And uh, well, what is the image of the beast? What is it inwardly? And you know how will God? You know those that take the image will be you know cut off. They'll no longer be a, a child of God, right? No more grace. And the Lord was speaking to me on this this morning, and he said that the main determining factor of what the image is has to do with your heart, has to do with the inward parts, right? And if you look at uh, the world on one side, and you look at Believers on the other side that are bringing forth fruit, what would the main difference be? And I'm going through this with my landlady, right? And she's not a believer. She has a very strong Jezebel spirit, and I have to put up with a lot of crap. And uh, but the Lord's given me the grace to go through it, and and um, I'm, you know, through it, I'm, I'm learning what the image of the beast is. It talks about in scripture those who have the love of money in their heart, who have the love of self in their heart, those who will take you out for dinner and put out the welcome mat, but they have an ulterior motive in their heart, right? They have a self love in their heart. That's preparing the, the land, preparing the vessel to be transformed, to take on the image of the beast, to take on the, the character and nature, not of the king of kings, but of the God of this world, right? And those that are walking in self-love, who have ulterior motive, who, uh, who are lovers of money, they put their trust in this I don't call money, that they're taking on that image. They're, cause that's, uh, you know, they're being transformed first in their mind, right? First in their mind. That our, it's our minds that are under attack. On the other hand, you have believers that are walking in the, in the spirit, uh, bringing forth uh, fruits of repentance, and that, uh, they are walking in, in love, one for another, to love your brother and sister as yourself, right? And if you're living in a, in a Goshen camp, say, and the lady next door over here, well, she, she hurt her leg and she can't chop wood. You don't even wait to be asked to go and chop the wood for her. You just, you just do it, because that, that's what Jesus would do and you don't tell anybody about it. You go and do it for the glory of God. And 
So these camps, these end time camps, uh, this is the year that God is dividing between the clean and the unclean, between the holy and the unholy. How can the Lord take the all these dry bones out there, right? He's raising up these dry bones. He's getting them, getting them ready to bring them together. And for that to happen, to begin, there has to first be a separation between the clean and the unclean, because the unclean is not going to be allowed to go into the ark, right? The ark is Christ. And this is the time that, uh, you know, God's bringing forth the separation. Those who have the love in the world in the heart, that's where they belong. They belong in the world, and the wicked shall come under God's judgment. On the other hand, God's going to take the righteous, bring them into the places of refuge, and preserve them through the time of tribulations, and the darkness would not be able to overcome the light. There would be a protective barrier over these Goshen camps. But it's going to take those who have come to the place of spiritual maturity, where they uh, love their neighbor, love others, uh, more than themselves, right? No greater love does a person have if he lays down his life one for another. That's not just being a martyr. What about the living martyrs? And that's how these camps will be. These camps will be a place where you learn to become a martyr spiritually, to lay down your life one for another. And these are the clean that God's going to bring into the barn and he's going to burn the chaff. There has to be a separation. So, the separation is happening between clean un and unclean. Then the uh, ingathering will begin into these end time camps. And as we learn to walk in the unity, unity of the Spirit, then, only then, will the revelation of Jesus Christ begin to manifest. And uh, this is where Jesus will unveil himself, he will reveal himself in a people that he has been preparing, right? It takes, it's taken me 40 years, at least, to get the oil, oil on my lap, right? So the bridegroom, you know, the bridegroom is coming, saying, wake up, wake up. And who is the bridegroom? It's Jesus and the people that he's been preparing to sound the alarm. To get the oil in your lamps that you might have light to walk out this dark time ahead. And uh, so, if you're in a situation, a relationship, a friendship that is unclean, you need to separate yourselves from it. But what does God say? Does What does darkness have to do with the light? Right? This is a time of separation. And, it, and it's also the time where God's now going to shake the foundation of America and the house of cards is going to fall. And if we're in the system, we're going to fall with it. So God in his mercy and his, in his knowing the end from the beginning, he is going to begin to gather together his bones and prepare our people for uh, <clears throat> it's going to be bringing forth the, the, the fruits of the kingdom, right? We're in the time of transference from the sixth day into the seventh day, go from a time of uh, church to going into the wilderness to learn to live in these camps and to bring forth fruit and transformation into the image and likeness of the king. That's, that's where we're at. But this year is the beginning. And I, and I know that a lot of the stuff the Lord's given me over these last 40 years, I'm getting it out now on, the, on this Exodus 2 live series. It's not for me. It's for you out there, it's for the body out there to take what I've spent a lifetime and to begin to de develop the different technologies to get the various revelations that the Lord has put in my heart to speak so that you can know the, know the truth because it's the truth that's going to set you free, right? And, uh, okay, I'm just going to end it here. Uh, I've been pushing on 
to be hours of the morning getting this stuff out. And because I know my time where I'm at in North Bend, seeing that this my boardroom situation is coming to an end, because I'm in a situation there where, where and I can I can see it manifest, where the lady of the house, she's the the, the love of the world has taken her over. Her her love, her idol, is the love of money, and it, you know, you, you know, I, I mean, seeing it manifest, it is. It's like uh, she will not open up her heart to the Lord, learning to love others as herself, or more than or more than herself. Right? She has ulterior motive in the heart, in her heart, and God is bringing forth a separation, and He's going to remove me from that place and plant me here on this spot. And God's going to begin to bring forth a, a small gathering of end time believers. Okay, going to end it here. I have a, another video to do after this. This is uh, Joshua Taylor and Max coming to you from uh, my workplace in Boston Bar, British Columbia. Okay, Maxie. It's my little poo-poo.